can this or excuse me I'm reading from the minutes I should get to the agenda I will find my place here pretty quick I suppose anybody else got an agenda never mind my helper here found it for me so we carry on a little bit more here thank you mr. secretary <laughs> so we'll go on to uh, public comments please and this is an item for item for either public comment on any action comment and it is limited to no more than three minutes judging by the big audience we're going to be here for a while <laughs> See no public comments. We'll move to approval of the agenda, please. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the agenda. Second. Have approval of the agenda and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval is accepted. And we're looking for the approval of the minutes to review the impossible approve the minutes for the December 15th, 2016 Planning Commission meeting. Mr. Now I can read these, right? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the minutes are approved. I got two sets of these. Excuse me. And now we'll look for an announcement of a committee report. Uh, Mr. Uh, Vice uh, the only announcements I have are that uh, next meeting of the Planning Commission will be on February the 16th. Uh, and then um, at that meeting, uh, we will be doing um, an election of officers. Uh, so we anticipate that the two vacant seats, vacancies will be uh, filled uh, at the, uh, uh, by, the, by the mayor and the city council prior to that. And then uh, you would uh, you would have a full a full seven um, on your body, and that officer's election could occur at that meeting. And we will also do uh, a review of the uh, the rules of procedure uh, at that time. And so we figured that we wait until then in order uh, to use that as an opportunity for you know uh, the the full planning commission to go through those. Uh, and then finally, the last item is I just wanted to um, let the planning commission know that on Monday, this coming Monday, the 23rd, the uh, City Council will be conducting uh, their workshop on the sewer model update uh, in the event that any of the commissioners are interested in attending. And that will be the morning of, 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 of Monday. What time is that going to be? Uh, I believe it's at 8.30. 8.30? Yes, in the uh, basement of City Hall. On AV, any information item? Uh, no, there will be no, no information items. Here on, uh, this is for a public hearing. Consideration. Uh, uh, we're moving on to it for our public hearing. PC N one sixteen zero four nine. It's consideration of a possible action on a major deviation from a request to allow for a construction of a second unit within a five feet of the alley, a ten foot setback in a mixed used residential neighborhood. Zone districts located at 414 Fifth Street Sparks. Excuse me. Give me a second. It didn't open up the way I wanted it. Um, good evening. I'm Karen Melby, Development Service Manager. There we go. Um, before you today is a major deviation application to request the construction of a second unit within five feet of the um, alley, which is, requires a 10-foot setback, to be located at 14, 414 Fifth Street. And you'll see here on the vicinity map that this is the property that I'm going to be The applicant is requesting to reduce the setback from the alley, which this would be 4th Street here, or 5th Street, I'm sorry. Here is the alley here. There she's, the property is located between D and E Street. Um, the, spot, 
they are requesting to add an accessory, a detached accessory dwelling unit. The Sparks Municipal Code section, and I found this, more, this afternoon when I was preparing for my presentation that I had the wrong reference in here. I had, um, it should be 20.03003 is the accessory dwelling unit section of our zoning code, not 0511. That is actually our major deviation section. That's one, that is a mistake in my second I apologize for it. Um, anyway, the accessory dwelling units are promoted to be an efficient use of lands within the mixed use district and um, is also to, but there are standards that uh, make it to ensure that it's compatible with the neighborhood. The um, ADUs, as we call them, accessory dwelling units are allowed in the rear and must be 10 feet from the rear lot line, in this case, which would be your alley. They have to be located 10 feet. They must conform to our side setbacks and aesthetically consistent with the architectural structure. Uh, the major deviation request is to reduce the setback from 10 feet to 5 feet along the alley. They want to put the unit in this general area. Let me open the... Um, it's weird that you minimize it. Um, there's a site plan. Okay, this is the site plan. Um, so this is the existing house, which was constructed in 1907, as far as we can find. Um, it is a part of the old original O'Sullivan, the one of the original, the original subdivision in the city of Sparks, which was in 1903. It was recorded. So this is one of the original homes that was constructed, constructed or relocated in Sparks. Um, they're proposing to put this modular unit in the back. The original plan, they had this unit in here diagonal. They're going this way, which then they couldn't be adding parking, and but it did comply with the 10 feet between structures and the 10 foot rear. The other issue is um, these old lots have lot lines coming through the middle of it, and if they locate the structure over the lot line, then they have to do a reversion to acreage to eliminate because you can't put structures over a lot line. So we that was one of the conditions on this application, is that they have to, if they go over that lot line, then they have to um, do a reversion to acreage to get rid of the lot line. The other issue is at this point, we don't know. The, satir, the sewer lateral comes in off the alley somewhere in this location. So what, the reason I'm telling you this is when they get into the details of actually surveying where the sewer laterals and everything, this structure may actually have to go down here and then the parking would go on the north because you can put parking over a sewer lateral, but you can't put a structure over the sewer lateral. So they may end up moving this down. It would also maybe not require them to do the um, reversion to acreage. So this is the tentative plan at this point. It may, revert, it may be a flip is what I wanted to um, this application re represents a 50% reduction in the request, which is permitted by our major deviation. You can reduce up to 50% um, in our, under our major de deviation. The accessory dwelling unit will be a modular unit um, and will be located on a foundation. The ex exterior of the building will have trim on all the windows and the siding to paint the match, painted to match the existing house. Um, the proposed unit will comply with the side setbacks. In order to comply with the rear setback, the unit would have to be placed diagonally, as I described. Um, currently, there are no driveways off of Fifth Street, and so with this request, they would actually be able to put three parking spaces on this property, um, which they do not have at this time. There is an existing shed right here, which they will be removed. Um, we do allow tandem parking in residential districts, so they could do the two tandem and then one back here. So they, we do allow tandem in our residential districts. Um, the um, the um, condition three states that the architecture must be consistent with the house and will be reviewed with the building permit when they come in. The building permit would only be, because this is a modular unit, the building permit would only be for the foundation, electrical, and plumbing. The state actually regulates um, and reviews the um, mobile homes or modular units. This neighborhood is a, um, in reviewing the findings, the first one is consistent with the, the Title 20. Um, the city code's zoning is mixed-use district, 
and that's a land use designation of, res of residential neighborhood for this property. Um, the purpose of the mixed use district is to um, provide a mix of uses by the title and provide our higher residential densities. This is an older neighborhood and is transitioning to a mix of uses and higher densities. Um, the, uh, under finding two, the, the granting of the deviation will not materially de be detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare. There are multiple properties within this area. Um, if we go back to the vicinity map, I don't know why. That you can see there, there's several across the street and also within this block that have accessory dwelling units already. Um, so the um, for this reason, the approval of this press is consistent with the existing development in the area. The placing of the, the ADU at five feet from the rear property allows for them to have three parking spaces, as I stated early, which would relieve possibly some of the parking in the neighborhood, issues in the neighborhood. Under um, finding MD3, which is, the, um, is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of the property, there's multiple properties in the neighborhood that do have ADUs, and um, it's the applicant's intent to improve this property. Um, and they're saying that this um, ADU is one, the first step in, in renovating the property. Um, the granting of, under the fourth finding, um, the granting of the, does not constitute a special privilege. Um, there are no other properties, there are other properties in the area that have similar size and also similar uh, accessory dwelling units. The neighbors which have similar lot sizes could apply for a major deviation if they wanted to, to add an accessory dwelling unit and couldn't get it on their property to fit the setbacks. The granting of this major deviation does not constitute a special privilege. I also wanted to note that um, I have talked to several of the neighbors, they have come in and um, looked at the application or talked to me over the phone and everyone that I've that I have talked to were excited to see that somebody's doing some reinvestment in the neighborhood and felt that this was a good project they did not have any opposition to it um, staff is recommending an approval with uh, five conditions that concludes my presentation thank you is there any questions for uh, staff thank you mr. vice chairman um, I just want to wrap my head around this in, in terms of the code. So in terms of the des design standards for accessory dwelling units, we are looking at the single family uh, design standards. Correct. For, for the proposed. Because it, it will be only be two units. So once you get three or more units, that becomes multifamily. But at this point, it's still a single family project. Okay. And so under code, um, the uh, proposed accessory dwelling unit would have to have compatible architectural style materials and roof line? Um, it doesn't specify roof, but it does say that it has to be consistent architecture. Uh, at this point, we would look at that when she comes in with her building permit. Because I would, well, even though it's a foundation plan, I would say that I want to see what you're doing with the exterior of the unit. Um, and one of the things we would look at is make sure that it's the same material and also um, same colors. The roof line, the house, are, the existing house has two different roof lines. The existing home has a hip roof and the addition that was added on the back is a shed roof. So there are already two different roofing styles on this property. Uh, one, one last question is um, if this, if this, uh, this proposed accessory dwelling unit were to come in, apply for a building permit as permitted by right, with the um, renderings and the information that you provided in the packets, if, if it met the rear yard setback, would you be able, under code, to approve a building permit? Well, I would look at the structure and see what I want to consider it as being consistent, but yes, we could, if it met the setbacks. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Yeah, let me ask a couple. You, you were talking in that tandem parking was an interest to me. Uh, are there requirements with this secondary unit to to have off street parking? Well, the current I mean the, the current code is that you have one per unit, right? Or, or for a single family, it's one per bedroom. So this is a two bedroom house, and she's adding one unit. So that's why we're we're trying to bring it up to code. We felt that. 
because she's doing some improvements to the product, let's try and get it more in compliance with the code as much as we can. So Eventually that's why the, we were suggesting to add the three parking spaces. Right, so the tour for the front and then the back. And yeah. Tandem is it's allowed in City of Sparks? Yeah, well, if you think about a, it, people, when you have a garage and you park in your driveway, that's a tandem parking space. So that's why I would interpret it that a tandem parking space is permitted. Because we count the driveway and we count the garage. So that's a tandem parking space right there. All right, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, one other question popped into my mind. I, my understanding of the intent behind a major deviation is that it would allow, you know, some some flexibility with our zoning code to help us achieve our, you know, our, our master plan goals and, and goals in terms of design standards and this and that. Um, I'm kind of curious, has there been recently a major deviation request um, approved by the city within the last couple of years that had for the accessory dwelling unit that has a similar type of construction um, type and design of this uh, proposed ADU we're seeing tonight. Are you talking about um, a modular unit? Is that what you're getting at? Yes. Yeah, no. The, the major deviations that we've had in the past few years since we enacted the, this ordinance is um, we had one for a garage, we had an addition to a house, and then also we did a major de deviation for um, the floor area ratio on a commercial property. And those are the three that I can think of that we've done as major deviations. Will this be the first for modular? It's first, this is the first for an accessory, accessory dwelling unit. One other thing, you did notify the neighbors and you said you got no feedback from them. Well, I, I've talked to several of them, and they all were in support of the project. They felt that they were excited to see that somebody's doing some reinvestment in the neighborhood. And then I have another question. If sure. I Did you say there's a possibility of reversing the, the structure location to the park from the parking locations, reversing one for the other? You mean that on the site plan? Is that what you're talking about? Let me go back to that. I believe you said something about you can't place the uh, You can't see the, unit the units over. proposed on the north side of the property right now, but we don't know where the sewer lateral comes through. That's why. So, I was and engineering had a feeling. I don't know if you can see my little crosshairs here, but engineering had a feeling that the sewer lateral might come through here. So then that means that she will have to locate it on, but it'll still be with meeting all our setbacks. The five foot from the alley, and then the side. Five foot and ten foot from the structure. I understand that. So the possibility is when that sewer may be in a very old, old sewer here. We have no idea. But once it's located, then it's the de it'll be determined whether that structure will go on the parking where the parking now shows here. Yeah, and then the parking would and be the on parking. the north side. This this area would flip flop, basically. Vice Chair, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, Regarding the exterior, do we know what kind of materials are on the exterior? Or um, are, when she comes in for the building permit, are you going to, is it going to be that it matches what the front unit is? So if it is stucco, the back unit has to be stucco. If it's wood panel. The, exist, the existing house is, um, let me see if I can say this right, shiplap. For some reason, I'm having trouble saying that word today. But it, it's the little panels of so right. I I drove by the house. I've seen the house. So, um, so we'll I, I would actually defer that to the applicant. She's here. Okay. She would know better with the exterior. At this point, we just have preliminary plans. Okay. But it would be something that I would look at when the building permit comes in. Okay. Any further questions? Sal? Thank you, Karen. Is the applicant here? And would you like to add to this? Hi, good evening. You need to come up here, Michelle. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for the time. Um, uh, I don't have much to say. I'm not a contractor. I just... Uh, please uh, state your name. Uh, hi. I, my name is Michelle Domenici, and I am the property owner of 414 Fifth Street in Sparks. Hello, everybody. Um, so this is all brand new to me. Um, 
I've done everything right as far as I don't want to do anything wrong. So um, I'd like to add a, a, a one bedroom. It's zoned that way. I would like to have the opportunity to drop that property, and it is a, a prefab. Um, a little a little back history is I talked to some contractors that would build it from which I kind of like brick and mortar myself. So I guess that's a little old fashioned, but apparently it's a lot more expensive than a prefab home. So this is Craftsman Homes. Um, uh, the, all the plans that I submitted are there. Um, and it's just a more affordable way to, to improve the property. Uh, I think my, you can approve it or not approve it. Uh, and, I, and either way, I'm actually not, a, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it because here's the thing. This neighborhood has so much history. My home was built in 1907. It's going to either go to the left or to the right. We're either going to improve this neighborhood uh, or we're not. And, and, and if we, and if the not, it could do well, because I know there's a lot of redevelopment of sparks happening within, I've, I've been in tune with that. But I just want to help. So you don't have to approve this, but if, if you would approve it, I think it would help. I mean, it's a brand new, uh, and yes, to answer, I heard some of your, I don't, they offer a lot of uh, color codes and things that would blend with the, with the neighborhood itself. The home, my personal home, the, the, the main structure is beautiful. The ceilings are taller than I can't even stand on a stool and reach the top of them. It's kind of nice. Uh, that's all I've got. Um, I'm just trying to add this legally through all the proper channels. And that's why I'm here. I don't know what else to say, but I'm wel welcome, open to all sorts of questions. Any questions from this commission to the... Uh... Uh, yes. So the exterior, is it going to be a wood exterior or do they have different materials that you can, so it would blend with what is already on the lot? Yeah, uh, Craftsman Homes offers, and they are in Sparks, they're also, I believe, represented elsewhere. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't know, I believe it's... Um, uh, it's more of a vinyl grade, uh, and again, I, I apologize, I'm not a contractor. I would like wood. Um, I don't think it's wood. I think it's vinyl, um, I, uh, it, but it's designed to do 20-year grade or whatever. Right. Um, it's not going to be pink in color. You know, it's, it, it would blend with the, the home itself, um, so I, I apologize, but it, they offer me several color options, uh, which I did pro provide in my proposal, and um, so, yeah. Um, so I apologize. I don't oh, really no, know it's, what it's made of, that's right. but I don't believe it's made of wood. I don't. Okay. I, I just don't think for the price. That's why I couldn't hire a contractor to do it for the same price, right. unfortunately. And I did want to hire locally, so, but the difference, uh, just for, I mean, again, if you guys deny it, you deny it, but um, I, the difference in cost was about $30,000. Um, the reality, that was the reality. So, um, so I, I don't think it's, it's wood. I think it's some sort of last forever, never, you know, like a styrofoam cup thing. Great. Sorry. Thanks. That's <laughs> kind of right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, are, are, how are some ways that you can, the uh, proposed ad additional dwelling unit kind of be more compatible with the existing unit? That is my goal. Um, honestly, I, um, again, I want it to be 100% uh, legal. So uh, my goal would be to make it a, a nice blend. Uh, if, if you, I, I believe um, you, you, someone had mentioned they drove by the property and saw the property. Yes. Thank you. I did. And it's horrible in the front. It needs to be landscaped. I mean, there's just nothing but dirt. And so I want to throw some, this spring, I'm hoping to throw, throw out some tan bark. And, but I will get to your, your question. But So I just want to improve the look of it. If you look to the house next door to me, if anybody has, it's, they're not as blessed as I am. Um, and I'm not rich. I am not rich. This is all the money I have, guys. So, um, but... Um, so we can let my house dilapidate and look just like that, or we can help improve the, 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 so I want to landscape it. Um, 
but to answer your question, I have every, I want to build a fence in the back so that it, 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 it creates a private, wouldn't you like to have the privacy of having your dog, you know, be able to go out into his own yard and stuff. So I want to, I want to create a, it's all going to tie into the main property, but at the same time, I just, I want it to be a place where somebody can come, you know, we all work for, you're here, you're, it's past six, okay, you all work for a living, so that's it, it's all I've got, you're, um, I want to, I want to make it um, comfortable for, and so it's going to, there's going to be people in front, people in the back. That's what's going to happen. My mom's 80 years old. She may be the one, uh, bless her heart, uh, to her out today. She turned, and not, not that you guys care, but January 4th, she turned 80. So the nugget gave her $25 of free play. I took her out tonight. It, it, it ended, it ends January 31st. I know you guys don't care, but so um, she could be the one living in that back unit, and I need her to have a privacy, but it, it can't just be some trailer in the back. It has to improve the property. And if, it, if it's not real property, I don't want it. That's, so I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. Oh, okay. goodness. Thank you all. Thank you so yeah. much. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this item? If not, I will bring it back to the commission for... Oh, I'll close the public meeting. Thank you, Chief. And bring it back to the commission for discussion and a possible motion. Yeah, for the sake of getting the discussion going, Mr. Vice Chairman, um, I certainly appreciate what the applicant's proposing to do here. Um, I think the existing unit is, is, is very historic in nature and its architectural standard um, is good. And I certainly appreciate, I think I can see some pluses with the proposed um, project. For me, I, I, I'm just not able to make findings MD1 and MD4. Uh, with respect to MD1, I, I, uh, from the information that we've been provided in our packets, the, uh, I, don't, I don't believe that the renderings for the proposed ADU are, is compatible architecturally um, with materials, roof line, and style with the historic uh, nature and um, architecture of the neighborhood. Uh, with respect to MD4, there's been a lot of other accessory dwelling units built in the area, and I think we're, we're going to see more of that. And I, I just don't think with what's been proposed and the type of construction that's proposed for this accessory dwelling unit, that's it's, it's of high enough quality or is compatible with the existing neighborhood. Anything further? Not I'll entertain a motion. A motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. All right. uh, I move to approve the major deviation associated with PCN 160049 adopted findings MD1 through MD5 and the facts supporting these findings as set forth in the staff report. Subject to the conditions of approval one through five, as listed in the staff report. I have a motion. We have a second. Motion dies with lack of second. What do we do now, Doug? Well, you don't have to do anything, but that's the same as a denial. Um, you know, I think it's incumbent upon you guys to decide whether you want to approve it or deny it. Uh, make motions that reflect that. So, my Fisher Fields uh, made a motion to approve it. Died for like a second. Um, you could try it again. Commissioner Kerry could make a motion. Uh, you could continue it and take another crack at it with new information. Uh, if you have questions or would require additional information, you could ask staff to compile that for you or ask the applicant to submit additional documentation and make a decision at a later date. Um, it would be my preference that, that, well, you, that even you make a, some decision. Even a continuance would have to be a form of a motion. Is yes. that not right? Yes. 
And if you choose to continue it, I think it should be for some reason, uh, whether there's additional information, uh, whether there are other avenues where this problem might be solved by the applicant uh, that you'd like to see explored and you'd like to see it brought back at a future date, I would not continue it just to avoid making a decision. Uh, so therefore, I'll return it back to the commissioners to uh, we're looking for another type of a motion here. Is there any? Take a shot. Mr. Chairman or Vice Chairman, I'll make a I'll make a motion. I think you know for me it just kind of comes down to the existing railroad cottage architecturally doesn't doesn't really comply with you know what what the proposed construction type the accessory dwelling in it. Um, maybe an option we, you know, I'm not sure how the rest of the commission feels, but maybe an option we could have is that prior to the, we could amend, I think it's condition number three. We could amend that condition um, prior to, with some kind of language prior to the effect of a building permit being issued, the renderings for the proposed unit um, come back to the commission for approval. It's a small unit. It's in the rear. Um, I think there are a lot of pluses. The on-street parking is a big one, particularly in this area. Off-street off -street off parking, street. thank you. Yeah, on-street parking is a huge issue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially rib cook-offs. So I, I think I'll just throw that out there. Maybe we we could, you know, if if, if the commission. Your main concern was, as I understand it, with the conditions. My my main concern is with the architectural com compatibility. Of, of the proposed um, unit, if if the commission did want to move forward with this project, I think an option that is available is we could have um, renderings come back that would better better show what you know if, if the style more is, is more compatible based on what we have in our packets today. I'm not able to to approve the well, the motion. Personally, I had felt all along, and I don't know if I'm in line to make this comment or not. But I think we would have been far, far better off if we could have had some kind of an elevation of a proposal siding effect, some sort of an uh, elevation to that. It would help, I'm sure, these commissioners to study it a lot better. No, that's not enough. That's not a description of the outside material, Jamie. Okay. Yeah. So anyhow, we're still looking for something, and I, and I believe if you want to try attempt a motion of that, then the conditions change. Mr. Vice Chair. So, yeah, um, if I may make a suggestion, uh, Vice Chairman Peterson and uh, members of the commission, uh, if the concern is the um, is the architecture and the materials. Uh, maybe rather than uh, amend the condition, uh, what I might suggest is that you continue the item and ask the item to come back with uh, an elevation for the for the uh, building as to be as it is to be constructed. And then, if if you also you want to see the uh, a materials board or something along those lines, uh, so you can see what the what the siding would look like, uh, you know, to to, to buttress the. Uh, uh, the elevations, then you would have, if you would, if you will, all of the information that you might want at that point in time to make a decision about whether to approve this major deviation or not. Uh, that's what I was kind of referring to. If we could have, and I don't know whether my colleagues up here would agree or not, but if we could have a defined description of the exterior, the elevation material, the exterior materials that will be used in this, because we're in agreement with you to the fact that to improve the neighborhood, we surely want to be sure that what we're going to be placing in there is compatible with not only your residents, but the surrounding areas. And I would like my, for myself to see that, but I would like some, one of the commissioners to maybe put that motion forward to that, that we could continue this and on the basis that we could have a final and a deep complete description of the interior materials, exterior materials that are going to be used. Okay. That is my down. opinion. Come back down. So, um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, 
yes, I can provide whatever you need, and I apologize that I didn't have that. I mean, I, I know it's readily available, um, and so I will get that. That's I'm not hiding anything. Um, uh, so yes, and thank you again for hearing me today. That's all I have to say, but I, I, I do want to say if for one thing, please. Check out my neighborhood. I'm one of the few people that are, I'm putting every dime I have into it uh, to improve it. Um, and and, and it, you're right. Uh, you're, you're I, I get, you know, you got to, I'm not going to, I can't say this, but I get, because like I said, I can't reach the ceilings because they're really tall. They're, it's an amazing historical, it was 1907. Um, so it's a beautiful home. And a lot of those, they were called the railroad homes. Look it up. I mean, I know you know it. So I agree. It, what, it's what makes it really special. But in the same breath, I'm, I'm asking you, please, um, don't let me not build because um, it, it, needs, it needs a little push. And if you saw the people, it's a working class neighborhood. These people go to work every day. I see their kids, uh, rib cook off. Um, yeah, we, the, the joke is, you know, we put our little cones out and rent the, the parking space in front. Um, I mean, I haven't done that, but I'm, I'm just saying that's the joke. You're right. Please don't let me not build this because it's, it's only going to bring value to the neighborhood. And if I don't bring it, and if I don't build it, that's fine. That's okay. I'll keep my money. I'll put it in my pocket, and I'll, it'll remain what it is. And I'll still landscape the front. Well, it um, wouldn't be a burden to you then if we continue this to a later date and you come back to a later date with some fine-tuning of this project? I would be more than happy to offer up anything that you need. Absolutely. I, I, I don't, but it is through Craftsman Homes, and, and I, but it's no. not going to change from that. So whatever the material is, that's what it is. The, a regular contractor who I honestly wanted to hire, I wanted to give the work to a local contractor. It's, I'm kind of a believer of that. I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I don't believe in, um, I would want to keep the, the work local. Let's just leave it at that. I couldn't afford it. It was about $30,000 more to do that. Um, so here I am. Um, but I am trying to keep the permits local, the fees local, the community housing local. Um, it's, it's, I, I'm really asking you, please don't, um, no, it's not, you know what, guys? It's, it was built in 2016. Well, in this case, probably 2017. I'm sure some of it was prefabbed in 20, but 2017. It's not 19. 07, which is when the Victorian was built. And you're not going to find someone else who's going to try to improve this neighborhood that's going to be able to offer that. But I do value the home. That home is everything. It's beautiful. you you got to see it. You didn't see the pictures. I'll take pictures. The crown, no, it's not crown called crown molding. Um, the, the framing around the door, um, it, it's un unlike anything I've ever seen in any house. So the beautiful uh, apartments that they're by the nugget right now, that are super expensive to rent. This house is nothing like that. It does, it's amazing. Uh, so how can you not appreciate 1907? It was built by the railroad. The guys built the railroad. They hung out in those houses. They picked up that house and they moved it to the lot. We're not disputing all of that. I, I can't you, please, deny it. It's a beautiful house. Bear with us. We're, we, 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 if, if we will come to a decision if you will, just please bear with us, and we understand your position very well. So we thank, thank you. Thank you, Frank, and um, thank you. So I'll be given notice of what it is you guys want, more information of what you want. Is that what I'm being told? We'll try to address this in a motion up here to exactly what we are looking okay. for. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, and I'd like thank to... You bring it back to the commission and, and under these new findings and in terms with somebody with much, much more knowledge than I have, please attempt a, a motion at this. You are more than welcome. 
yeah, I've done that. I've probably caused this mess, but um, <laughs> I'll do my best to uh, make make a motion. I, I think my, my my main concern here is um, architectural style. I want to make sure that the that the accessory dwelling unit, if we're going to be approving a major deviation request, that it's compatible architecturally. So I want to see um, in terms of consistency, you know, materials to what extent you can do with the pre-manufactured housing, um, colors, and the roof. Um, so I think if we continue this item today, it will, will give the applicant an extra shot um, to see if they can improve the, the renderings and make it more compatible with the existing unit. So I'll get to a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to continue. Um, GCN 16049 and have it come back to the commission at a future date. Um, to review architectural compatibility. You need to choose a date. So February 16th. Have a come back to February 16th meeting. Thank you, Doug. Uh, February 16th, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so you've made your motion. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. <laughs> so have it. Thank you. And now we'll go into uh, general business. Uh, PCN 04051. Consideration of a possible action on a request for an extension of time of a tentative map to allow 986 lot single family residential subdivision on a site 831 acres in size. The Miramont Planning Development, generally located east of Desert Highlands Planned Development, east of Vista Ridge subdivision, and south of Wingfield Springs and Sparks. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the council. Our commission, I should say, sorry. Uh, uh, as described, this is uh, the Miramonte uh, plan development or, or tentative map more, more directly um, is being requested for an extension. Um, as you may know, uh, I would assume you know, there have been multiple uh, tentative map or not tentative, final maps uh, filed against the tentative map for Miramonte. Uh, State law requires that if a uh, tentative map is going to have multiple uh, final maps pulled against it, that they be done in a timely manner. The, the, the timeline they give for that is two years. Um, so that from each final map, there should be two years, but no more than two years between that and the next final map. Well, they're, they're coming up against that timeline in Miramonte now. Um, it won't be till August, I believe, but uh, they're trying to get ahead of it and get that extension. There is, again, state law gives them the opportunity to get a, up to a two-year extension on that timeliness that, that's required. And so that's what they're asking for now. Um, this extension doesn't change, nor can it change, their conditions of approval that were attached to the tentative map. So any action uh, taken by the Planning Commission will just extend the existing tentative map as it exists out two more years so they have till 2019 to um, pull another final map uh, against the tentative map. Um, I am available for questions. There's not a lot going on. A lot, lot fewer moving parts, so to speak, uh, than Karen's <laughs> item. So, uh, but if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those. Any questions from commissioners? Uh, Mr. Crittenden, would you speak to the month in which the extension would go to? It, it's my understanding it would be August 2019. Is that correct? That, that I believe, is correct. Sorry, let me get my, my, my dates out. Um, so, yeah, the original... Um, Okay, so the most recent final map that was pulled against the Miramonte uh, tentative map was uh, 
phase 4B, and that was in August, uh, August 10th of 2015. And so that's the date they're working from for their next final map to have to be filed against the property, or filed against the tenanted map. And so their existing date is August 10th, 2017, and they're asking for an extension to August 10th, 2019. That is the case irrespective of whether or not you approve it here in January tonight. Correct. Correct. They're not penalized for getting their work done early. Oh, is, is phase four uh, built out right now? No, it's not. Um, it, it, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. No, the, the final map just needs to be filed against it by that, that in that timeline. Or, or approved is actually what needs to happen. There's a little bit of ambiguity as when it actually has to get recorded and so forth. But it needs to be approved by city council within that timeline. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Ian, what is the uh, reason behind the request from the applicant to extend the tentative map approval date? I, I couldn't speak to all of the reasons behind it, but I, I can speak to one specific hurdle that I know they're, they're working against that is slowing them down some. Um, that being um, one of the uh, uh, conditions of approval on the original tentative map was that um, at the point that the 600th lot is final mapped there are roadway improvements that have to be done on Los Altos uh, uh, south from from Miramonte Los Altos down to Vista there are roadway improvements that need to be done um, through a long convoluted series of events um, this was all under one ownership um, and, and that, that developer had those res that responsibility upon them. Well, as, as through the economic downturn, this reverted back to individual ownerships um, because of, of default issues. And so now we've got multiple individuals trying to figure out how they're going to make this work to, to get those roadway improvements done. There, there's been some discussion about um, asking for an amendment to that and so, so there's a lot of moving parts there and and they're not ready to to try to file that 600th unit they're not prepared to make the improvements required to do that yet and so they need some more time to figure that out it, it is is essentially the I wouldn't say the the reason but one of the big reasons that, that this has um, slowed down to the extent that it has that, that makes sense to me. Thank you. I just want to make sure that was on the record. Okay. Basically, since the applicant isn't here, you have to answer his questions. Right? <laughs> More or less. Thank you. Right. Any further questions? If not, I'll bring it back. This is not a public hearing, so I'll bring it back to the board for possible motion. I'm ready to make the motion. I move to approve a time extension for the tentative map for the Miramonte Plan Development Associated PCN 04051 for a period not to exceed two years. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So be it. Now we go to a recommendation to the mayor of a, for a commissioner to serve on the Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Commission for a term beginning upon ratification of City Council and editing, ending June 30th, 2019. So I'm looking for nominations. Uh, who's currently on the yeah, regional Mr. planning board? Yeah. So the Mr. Vice Chair, can we find out from staff how alternates are? Because didn't we choose alternates and everything? Right. Do we who's know? What's the order? Currently on regional. Right. Right now, I believe that uh, it is Art. the two serving are Art. Right. Diane. And Diane. Right. I nominate uh, Frank Peterson for the regional planning. I'll second. I have a nomination and a second. Any in favor? Or any further? <laughs> nominations. Yeah. If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> I love Rome. Any opposed? <laughs> Thank you. 
looking for a public comment, and I guess this is the time that I would like to say this. Uh, thank you, people, for that. And uh, Jamie, especially, I know uh, you are next in line, and I want the rest of the commissioners to know that uh, Jamie politely told me that he would step aside if in order for I to have it, and I appreciate it, Jamie. Thank You're you very much. Welcome. Okay, and that's my comment. Any further comments from the commissioners? So, what, what do we got to do about the alternate? No, do, do we vote on that today? Is that in there? Or can't, do we uh, need to? Yeah, so we can do that next, next time. time. Got it. Okay. Any, no, any, no further public comments. I uh, take a motion for adjournment. Adjourned. Okay, so um, do you want to? Thank you.